It's raining men. Hallelujah, it's raining men. Amen. So goes the famous 1982 hit by the Weather Girls, It's Raining Men. Yet for a woman in London on the 30th of June of this year, it was literally raining men, or rather a single man, who fell to his death and landed in the garden of a London suburbanite. The woman had been calmly sunbathing when suddenly the body of a man landed with a crash just one meter away. Upon investigation, a bag, some water, and other personal effects were discovered, and it was believed that the man had stowed away in the landing gear of a Kenyan Airways flight inbound to Heathrow Airport. Astonishingly, this was not the first time that such an incident has occurred, and people falling to their deaths from the landing gear wells of aircraft is a not so uncommon occurrence throughout history. On February 22, 1970, a 14 year old boy fell to his death just shortly after takeoff from an attempt to stow away in the landing well of a Douglas DC 8 flying from Sydney to Tokyo. An amateur photographer astonishingly happened to capture the event just as it happened, and the boy began his fall. International flights are notoriously expensive, at least those outside of Europe, where budget airlines such as Ryanair let you literally take your life into your own hands for the cheap cost of an average taxi fare. Yet despite the dangers, many people routinely attempt to stow away aboard an aircraft. And while most attempt to gain access to the cargo compartments or even inside the aircraft itself, in lavatories or maintenance areas, more desperate souls routinely attempt to stow away inside the wheel well of the aircraft. Of 113 verified attempts to stow away in the wheel well of an aircraft, between 1947 and 2015, 86 of these people died, giving would-be stowaways a dismal success rate of 24%. These incidents are rarely investigated, but it's believed that most of the stowaways died from being crushed by the actual landing wheels. In most aircraft, there's very little room left after the massive wheels are retracted, and to make matters worse, there's no light inside the well itself. As the wheels start to move upwards, it can be difficult to understand how the legs connected to the wheels will fold up into themselves, and this can be fatal. Consider it a particularly difficult game of Twister, only instead of embarrassing yourself in front of your friends, your life is at stake. Putting an arm or a leg in the wrong place can lead to it being mercilessly crushed by the metal legs of the wheels, or trying to squeeze into what seems like a safe corner can lead to you being smashed to bits by the giant rubber tires themselves. The whole time you're also trying to not fall out of the aircraft, which is already moving well over 150 miles per hour, with a hurricane force wind trying to pry you loose. Needless to say, it's no easy task, and it makes us respect the few who survived the ordeal all the more. The second leading cause of death appears to be freezing to death, which should come as no surprise. The wheel wells are not climate controlled and are definitely not airtight. As the plane rises in altitude, the air gets colder and colder until eventually the temperature can hit as low as negative 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Because stowaways are trying to squeeze into a very tight space, they can't afford to bring lots of warm clothing to put on and fight the effects of the cold, and often are forced to simply huddle in the cold dark alone, trying to warm themselves with their own body heat. To make matters worse, as the plane rises in altitude, the air also gets thinner, which makes it even more difficult to breathe. The lack of oxygen can lead to hypoxia or the body not getting enough oxygen to survive. If you've watched our previous video on the man who survived being frozen for 12 hours though, you'll know that extremely cold temperatures can actually work to help keep a person alive. The extreme cold will slow down the body's core processes, which in turn drastically reduces the amount of oxygen needed to survive. Thus, the lack of air alone is usually not fatal. Another problem facing stowaways though is the fact that the very low atmospheric pressure of high altitude flight is well below the threshold needed to maintain consciousness. This means that stowaways will go unconscious not long after the plane hits its cruising altitude. While again this can help keep a person alive in extreme cold and oxygen deprived environments, the real problems of consciousness begin when it's time for the plane to land. As the plane descends to land and the wheel well is warmed and atmospheric pressure is restored, which can begin to wake up an unconscious stowaway. Yet, if the stowaway isn't fully alert by the time the plane comes in for the final approach, typically only taking a few minutes from initial descent, then the landing gear will drop and the unconscious or semi-conscious stowaway will plummet to their death. Even if the stowaway manages to not be crushed to death as the wheels retract, and then endures freezing cold temperatures for hours at a time, and manages to regain consciousness right before the plane lands, there's two more major problems to overcome. The first is a condition common to deep sea divers known as the bends. 
Because the wheel wells are not pressurized, nitrogen gas bubbles begin to form in the bloodstream and the fluids inside the body's tissues. Normally, to combat the bends, divers will slowly bring themselves back to the surface, spending time at different depths to slowly dissolve the nitrogen that's formed in their bodies. For a stowaway whose jet is descending at several thousand feet a minute, this isn't an option. The nitrogen bubbles begin to burst all at once, causing extreme pain and sometimes even being fatal. Next time you pop open a can of soda, imagine that happening inside of your body. The pain can be excruciating and it makes clinging on to wheels as the plane descends that much more difficult. Yet, if the stowaway manages to avoid the bends, then they also have the task of actually clinging on to the aircraft itself as it descends with the wheels lowered. Airplane landings are basically nothing more than controlled crashes, and because metal is heavy, it tends to fall out of the sky at very high speeds. A commercial jet airliner typically comes in for a landing at anywhere between 150 to 166 miles per hour, which is enough speed that the plane is still generating some lift with its wings and can land relatively smoothly. Because after much research into the issue, major airliners discovered that passengers tend to dislike when their plane lands nose first on the ground. It also runs up operating costs as each flight necessitates a brand new aircraft and aircrew both. For a stowaway clinging on for dear life, this is equivalent to trying to hang on to the the face of a Category 5 hurricane, all the while being jostled as the aircraft is buffeted by turbulence during final approach. Needless to say, some stowaways are unable to keep a grip and fall to their death. Despite all the dangers, though, people continue to attempt to stow away at the wheel wells of aircraft, as they're much easier to access than the cargo compartments that are often locked up. One 12-year-old child from Indonesia actually survived a several hundred-mile trip in the wheel well of a Douglas DC-3 aircraft way back in 1946. Granted, DC-3s had a flight ceiling of around 20,000 feet, so this particular stowaway didn't have to deal with many of the dangers that modern stowaways have to when flying at 39,000 or more feet. This 12-year-old Indonesian child would go on to be naturalized in Australia and live out a happy life. Unfortunately, a Soviet teenage stowaway two decades later would be crushed to death as he attempted to flee the Soviet Union in a flight from Moscow to Paris. Another 13-year-old stowaway from France died when the landing gear of his aircraft was lowered on final approach and he fell to his death. Like with so many who died this way, it's believed that he hadn't fully regained consciousness yet. A migrant worker in 1995, however, froze to death on a flight to Shanghai and his body fell when the plane was on final approach to the airport, giving a rather rude surprise to whoever was directly below. Tragically, in August of 1996, two young Mongolian boys aged 9 and 12 both died after attempting to stow away in the wheel well of a U.S. Air Force Lockheed C-141. The 12-year-old was discovered crushed to death by the service crew after the plane landed, and the 9-year-old would die of his injuries two days later in a U.S. military hospital. A similar story with a 50% happier ending occurred later that same year, when two Indian men stowed away on a flight from New Delhi to London. One of them survived the 10-hour flight in the nose wheel at 35,000 feet, but his younger brother died when he froze to death. Tragically, the two brothers had paid an informant for knowledge on how to access the baggage hold of a Boeing 747 from the wheel well, but upon sneaking into the wheel well, they discovered that there was no such access. Though the surviving brother applied for political asylum after the landing, he was denied and sent back to India on the first flight after leaving the hospital, presumably not in the wheel well this time. Another man from Burkina Faso failed to hold onto his aircraft's wheels as the plane came in for a landing and plummeted to his death just before landing. Most disturbing of all, though, is the death of an unknown stowaway who was crushed to death in the wheel well of a Boeing 767 and actually caused a landing gear failure. The plane was forced to conduct an emergency landing when the wheels wouldn't fully retract. Though unknown to crew, this was because the stowaway's mangled body was preventing them from doing so. Upon lowering the wheels for landing, body parts fell on a busy traffic intersection in a town of Saudi Arabia. Not all stowaway attempts end tragically, though, and the world's first aerial stowaway is credited to 19-year-old Clarence Terhune who in 1928 stowed away on a German Zeppelin flying from New Jersey in the US to Friedrichshafen, Germany. He made a bet with his brother-in-law that he could beat all previous stowaways by hitching an illegal ride aboard the German Zeppelin and revealed himself to the crew above the Atlantic Ocean. He was made to work in the kitchen for the remainder of the flight and arrested after landing, though the German people considered him something of a hero and sent him telegrams, dinner invitations, and even job offers. Terrifyingly, the American Federal Aviation Administration openly admits that the full list of stowaways who die attempting to hide in the wheel wells of aircraft is unknown, and current estimates are incomplete. The FAA says that due to so many airports being near the ocean, an unknown number of stowaways have surely fallen 
fall into their death into the sea as their plane came in for a landing. This leaves the real number of people who have died in the wheel wells of aircraft unknown, though it's clear that only extreme desperation could possibly drive a man or woman to do such a thing. Next time you fly, consider that while you're enjoying the in-flight movie and a complimentary packet of peanuts, a stranger may be dying just a few feet away in the wheel well of your aircraft. Would you ever risk stowing away in the wheel well of an airplane? How would you survive? Let us know in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great content.